Hi guys, Ross here at Frothy Bike Co. This is the Kona Blast, they arrived yesterday. I built an XL up just for YouTube. Um, start off with the price, it's 999 British Sterling. We've got a few of these in stock just now, they're probably going to sell out fast to be fair. Uh, but this is going to be on YouTube so you can refer to this for the components or for any other information you're looking for. It comes with pedals, so it comes with these standard black plastic pedals. Decent sized pins on them, it's a pr pretty good sized platform on them as well, so they're not thinny, thin skinny little pedals. Um, if these were to retail on the shelf with a brand, a better brand name on it than Kona, these would be 30, 40 pound pedals, so think of it like that. You probably get six months to a year out of these pedals before the pins wear down, and then change them out for some plastic with metal studs or full metal pedals. Anyway, let's jump straight into the bike. Um, it's a good price point, it's a really good middle of the range hardtail mountain bike if you're going out a couple of times a week this is what you're aiming at if you're only out a couple of times a month this might be a little bit too much for you um if you're going out three or four times a week you're probably going to deteriorate this bike quicker than uh, than you should so try and go for a higher end model if you can but if this is your budget this is what you've got thousand pounds buys you a lot from kona wheels 27 and a half inch wheels it comes with these 2.35 forecaster maxis tires they're not fancy tyres by any means, um, this is just a bog standard tyre from the factory. They come with tubes in them, but you could make them tubeless. The rims are tubeless compatible, so it does have the little symbol here saying tubeless compatible. I would just put a little bit more sealant in the tyre, just because the tyre doesn't say it's tubeless compatible. You can just put some more sealant in it and it'll be fine. Put some um, valves in there as well, so buy some muck-off valves or whatever colour valve you like uh, and change it up for tubeless. If you want to make tubeless, that is. I prefer tubes myself. It's just my own thing. Front forks. So these are RockShock Judy forks. It's a long-standing model from RockShock. Fully serviceable as well. So you can buy new seals for it. You can put oil in them. The uh, lifespan of these forks is far greater than like, so the Sun Tour or RST forks that come on some other models at this price point. Uh, it's a 100mm lockout on this side here, the cartridge and it's got an air chamber on the far side there, so you will need a shock pump to set the forks to your weight, whatever weight you are as a rider. There's a little chart printed on the back of these, so there's a chart down the back there to set the forks up to your rebound setting as well on the bottom there, so rebound is how quick it bounces back. Um, the little hair makes it like a pogo stick, the little turtle um, makes it really soft like a, a wet sponge. That's my kind of description of it. The wheels, the hubs themselves, these are Shimano hubs with quick release and centre lock rotors. Um, just on the rotors, I'll go into disc brakes now. The rotors themselves are resin only rotors, so it comes with a resin pad uh, and the caliper. Uh, if you want to make, get slightly better braking power out of it, I would change these up for some sintered rotors so they can take metal or sintered pads in the caliper. These are standard Dior calipers as well, so it takes a really basic pad which you can buy from pretty much every bike shop in the land or the world. Long, long-standing caliper design, that one from Shimano. The lever up the top here, this is like the Shimano old-school Dior lever, has a slightly um, longer blade on it as well for some better leverage and power through it. Um, bog standard again, it will last the test of time. These don't break that often. Um, we're really happy with them. Mineral oil through it as well, so it doesn't deteriorate any of the paintwork. If you do bleed it yourself and spill any oil, there's no main issues there. Again, that's a mechanical thing. Just if somebody asks us to bleed these, we are far happier as mechanics than somebody asking us to bleed SRAM uh, brakes, for instance. The frame on the bike, it's a full alloy frame as well. So it does have routing, cable routing for a dropper seat post. So you can make it stealth. It has got a, the cable in, out, back in the bottom here and then make it stealth all the way through. Mounts as well, I've got two bottle cages in the middle of the frame there. It does have a rear rack here for a pannier rack. If you wish to put a pannier rack on it, it'll take a standard disc compatible pannier rack on it. It does have two mounting points. I would suggest a lower mounting point just so your pannier rack sits a little bit lower. It does have the, the mounts up the front there. Drivetrain, it's a 11 speed Shimano Dior drivetrain on it. So it's a 28 tooth up front and 11 to 51 tooth on the rear on this dinner plate cassette with a clutch rear mech. The front chain ring is removable, so you can change the front chain ring to a larger ring if you want a little bit more speed out the bike. Just now, that's kind of low, one of the lowest ratio setups you can have around. Um, if you want to go a little bit faster on the roads or some fire road work, I would change this 28 tooth up to like a 34 or something like that. Uh, you need to put a slightly larger chain on it as well because you're increasing the size. It might not like it in the big cog at the back, but 
uh, 28 tooth is more than capable at the front. It does have the, the tooth kind of profile here so that um, it's like fat tooth, thin tooth technology. There's a proper name for it, I can't remember it. The chain stays on better, basically. With it having a clutch rear mech as well, so there's a little button here, the lever that you can move on the rear mech. With it being off, it's it flaps about and you're going to get chain slap onto your chain stay here and mark your frame and you switch it on for some better gears. Uh, so the gears don't jump about the same, there's less chance of it coming off the front cog here and it doesn't slap about the same. But the reason that you can have it on or off, you need to switch it off to remove the back wheel. It's really hard to move the mech out of the way if you leave it on and try and take the back wheel out of the frame. Um, these do need adjusted over time, so if you do find, if you're having problems, you know, three, four years down the line from this video is made and you find that you switch your clutch on and it flaps about still, you just need to tighten your clutch up. There's no main issues there. Square taper bottom bracket. I like this as a mechanic, you can change it in and out quite easily, they're really cheap to replace. The actual ball bearings that are inside these are far larger and take more pressure than the, the fancier versions that are external cups. Um, there's efficiency issues with this, this isn't, isn't the most, it's not the most efficient bottom bracket, but um, it's a thousand pound hardtail, you're not looking to break um, speed records or Strava segments. Um, the bottom bracket is absolutely fine for it, really easy to replace, 12 to 15 pound for a good bottom bracket plus fitting. Um, a little upgrade as well, these little plastic tags, I've done it on my Instagram account, I just pop these off, chuck them in the bin, put zip ties on it. The main issue is these pop off and deteriorate over time, your cable becomes slack like this and it does eventually touch your back tyre and it'll rip the cables off, go through your back tyre and cost more money and damages, um, especially if your hydraulic hose goes through and touches your back tyre. Um, hydraulic hoses aren't that cheap to be honest, especially not the, the fittings to mount it into the caliper so just change these out for zip ties the best way to go um this being the xl it does come with quite a large seat post in it so that's like 400 mil plus seat post and um, the smaller frames do come with smaller seat posts um if you're mounting a child seat on the back of this there's plenty of space to mount a child seat here so plenty of grabbing room there there's plenty of space between the tire and the seat tube as well this is the XL, so that space will get smaller, but I think it's you don't really run into issues until you get the small frame uh, blast um, or um, fire mounting or any of the 27 and a half inch wheels from Kona hardtails. You don't have any problems until you get to a small frame when this distance becomes too small and too tight that you can't get a clamp in there. I think I've covered everything. Um, alloy bars, alloy stems, a 31.8 mil bar clamp that's on it. And so if you're changing handlebars, it's 31.8 mil that you're looking for. I think that's us yeah when they come out the box if you buy it from a uk distributor like an online shop and it arrives in the box unopened from the shop it will have european brakes like you see here so this what would usually in britain be the front brake lever the hose actually goes to the back and what would be the back brake lever the hose goes to the front so you need to switch these over if you're used to riding in britain and british standard um eight mil spanner and do these i'll maybe do a separate video on that but you really ideally need to switch it over um it can take a bit of time to get used to that. You think you're used to it until something happens on the trails and with quick reaction time, you grab a handful of the back brake, but it's actually the front brake. It's not pretty. Just change the hoses over. Get them bled with your local bike shop. Um, they're nice and easy to bleed, like I say. I think I've covered everything. Leave a comment below if I've not covered an aspect of it. Saddle comfort is an aspect I've not covered. It's got the cut out. Really comfy saddles. These just... If you've got your favourite saddle, just give that a try for a week or so. Um, my Kona Libre at home, my gravel bike's got the same style saddle from Kona. Uh, these, I'm pretty sure these are made by WTB, which makes some really good saddles. So they do come from a proper saddle company as opposed to making them from some other factory who, who are not known for their saddle styles or comfort. Thanks for watching, guys. Feedback is most welcome.